We're back with The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. GD Johnson joins us this morning for Off the Press. GD, Happy New Year and thank you for joining us. Okay. Uh, I think we seem to have uh, audio connections uh, challenge right there. I hope we're able to sort that out as we progress. Now, quickly, we start off with the, uh, the Punch newspaper this morning. Looking at the Punch newspaper for uh, the big stories. 28 governors pile up 5.8 trillion naira debts for incoming government. <laughs> 28 governors pile up 5.8 trillion naira debts for incoming governors or government. State debts to increase above 200% of revenue in 2023. That's according to the World Bank. Lagos cannot execute laudable projects with loans. A commissioner is quoted to say, but the, the question would be if... I mean, there's a lot of um, revenue that's being generated in Lagos. What's, what's Lagos' business in getting loans? Consumers say electricity tariff hike illegal. Anger spreads. Federal government gives operators ultimatum to name all well owners. And two senior lawyers want EFCC scrapped. Just before we move away. Uh, you have another one saying, Mackinday kickstarts second term campaign faces multiple battles. And uh, commuters groan as Julius Berger uh, returns. Uh, that's uh, the Lagos Ibadan Highway. How Lagos Policeman Ministry paid 185,000 naira for new bond. These are very hard times, sad times, uh, very inhuman. If you ask me, the nation newspaper says presidential poll G5 keeps PDP supporters in suspense. G5 keeps PDP supporters in suspense. I've never seen it, you know, such a dramatic election year. Mackinday to announce preferred candidate. Governors protest exclusion of Atiku's name on list. NFIU to enforce ban on cash withdrawal from public accounts. March the 1st, all APC governors behind Tunubu Suleiman affirms and council autonomy are headache on constitutional amendment and 22 fuel stations sealed for selling above approved price. Aragba Shola's men in Oshun APC campaigns team is quoted to say these are the headlines you find. But we just turn our attention to the Guardian uh, newspaper this morning. The Guardian says... The 2023 term inflation in security fuel subsidy expert tells government. Term inflation in security fuel subsidy expert tells government. And it feels like we're able to control all of this. Then just maybe, you know, our economy is just going ahead. One, one on wrong steps ahead of elections. It's significant year for Nigerians. Uh, how electorate outcome will determine economic progress, inflation, cost of living crisis among major challenges. Now, the truth is the 2023 election, just as every other election, but I think this is very critical. It's going to be, uh, it's very significant because investors, individuals, a lot of persons are waiting for the outcome of this election. And the outcome of the elections will determine whether uh, we would have more investment or investors will pull out of the country and what have you and how many persons would, you know, relocate. Uh, the word would be jackpot. Uh, but that's, that, that's a lot to consider. Most importantly is that every other person gets their PVC. NFIU talks tough on cash withdrawal limits and threaten offenders with imprisonment. EFCC shouldn't be in existence. Nigerian constitution faults, faulty, says Agbakoba. Now, federal government to transfer 613 rehabilitated repentant terrorists to states. Federal government to transfer 613 rehabilitated repentant terrorists to states. Those against obese endorsement by President Olusegun Nobasanjo don't mean well for Nigeria, Ohaneze is quoted to say, how cost of production, import dependence undermine national 
drug security. I said this morning on uh, the Guardian newspaper, and then quickly we have the Daily Trust cash withdrawal from government account to end March the 1st. NFFIU is quoted to say officials to receive extra code allowance through accounts. Federal government states, local government withdrew over 1 trillion since 2015. Implementation requires political will. Uh, Expert are saying, and that's also out of uh, not out of the conversation. Program ought to have started alongside TSA. OPEC oil output increases as Nigeria rebounds. Bauchi Emir replaces Belukere fee with Ahmed Kari as new Wazari, and 18 Bornu passengers burned to death in Bauchi auto crash. INEC divorced PVC collection towards and registration areas. We spoke uh, yesterday with the HOD uh, of uh, publicity right here in Lagos, and she had mentioned that. Five days old Boyrick's amputation over doctor's negligence in Kano. Local government autonomy bill hindering constitution amendment. That's what Omo Agege is saying. And APC governors not in a secret deal with a Tiku uh, Nasser or governor quoted to say. Let's quickly uh, bring our guests in, share his thoughts on some of the headlines this morning. Jide Johnson, it's good to have you join us. Thank you so much. Well, we hope that we have Jide Johnson, uh, you know, connected to us as soon as we can. But the, the headlines this morning, if you go through the pages uh, from The Punch to The Nation, The Guardian and The Daily Trust newspaper, the headlines, uh, the headlines, I beg your pardon, are very interesting. And one that is astounding is the fact that you have lawyers asking that the EFCC be scrapped. And uh, that that's a very strong one. And you also have the fact that when we talk about revenue, because... Uh, we seem to be dealing with a revenue issue in our country as a people. 28 governors pile up 5.8 trillion naira debt for incoming government or governors, however you want to put it. But 28. Don't forget that we have 36 states of the federation, including the FCT. So look at the ratio. Look at the calculation. That's a lot. But what exactly is going on? And we have constantly asked and queried, you know, the pattern where we have to be highly dependent on the center for allocation. Is it very healthy? And if it's not healthy, then how come we have not uh, been able to decentralize and ensure that there's resource control? That conversation, that word resource control has been in our lexicon for a very long time. And everyone says we need to, you know, states need to be able to control their resources. People need to be able to, you know, get to a point where they say the resources that we have, uh, we're able to, you know, utilize them and then uh, make do with it. Of course, remit to the center, not the other way around. Uh, but but are we really sincere with this conversation? And uh, has this pattern not made us very lazy? Can we be progressive if we get to a point where uh, we're able, states are able to control their resources? The argument against that has been that just with uh, how you know governors have acted, it's also possible that these governors, uh, you know, will be too powerful. Uh, you know, towards our resources. Uh, there's a lot of arguments because if you talk about state, uh, controlling state resources, you also talk about state police. Jide Johnson uh, has reconnected with us. Uh, Jide, it's good to have you join us and thank you so much for being part of the show this morning. Happy New Year to our viewers all over the world. Um, well, um, maybe I was listening to uh, the analysis with respect to resource control. And it's the big elephant in the room that nobody is interested in talking about. And then if you look at the amount of money, when we're talking about resource control, we're talking about restructuring. And then um, and constitutional review is about distribution of power across the various tiers of government, which is the executive, judiciary, and legislature, and then across the various um, um, various tiers of government, the local states, in figure and then various organs of government, legislature, judiciary, and the executive. However, we are not having that conversation, and we have spent a lot of money trying to review the constitution 
I think we have spent over 12.8 trillion over the years within the consumer and not achieving it. Now, when you talk about resource control, one of the things about it is about local government autonomy, which was a major element of the, um, the constitutional review of the Nike Assembly, and which was also part of the um, 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 executive order 10 that Bari issued that was challenging the court and the court will wait. Not Most of the states did not, most of the state House of Assembly, unfortunately, a progressive state like Lagos State is not even interested in local government autonomy because they did not assent to it. So we are not having that conversation. And it's, it's, it's like we are in the same cycle. We are not making any progress because if you don't have resource control, you can't have um, you can't have constitutional federalism without having fiscal federalism. You can't practice federalism and practice federalism on paper and then not practice fiscal federalism with each for each unit of the nation having control over their resources. So in the dark street, we have found ourselves um, with respect to that. We continue to talk about it, but we have a major constitutional review that allows the states to retain part of whatever revenue that comes from their state and local government as well. So that's, that's the situation we keep talking about. They are not talking about what they are interested in is the big price. So no one is talking about restructuring. It's about giving back to the community and the rest of it. But Jide Johnson, uh, how long will we continue, you know, in this uh, type of practice, right? And, uh, I mean, look at that sum, that uh, governors have actually, 28 of them, have left that amount of money uh, that's on the Punch newspaper, you know, for the incoming government or governors. I I isn't it really worrisome? Uh, should we, we get to a point where uh, states should be allowed to express? Because, for instance, there are several states. For When we look at states... They are naturally endowed with different resources. There are mineral resources that we're probably not paying attention to. Why shouldn't we allow states to be creative, explore what they have, and then, you know, get revenue rather than being dependent on the kind of system that we operate where they have to go to the center? And now we know that the center is being threatened because of our inability to, you know, keep up with... Uh, uh, all proceeds, which is also a major factor that contributes to our revenue. So, you see, you see, you are worried about the state government. You are not worried about the federal government as well. And it's the federal government that should serve as as the final check to give its approval. Itself is boring. I don't know whether it's seventy seven billion or seven seven billion dollars that. The federal government is living as debt for the 77 trillion naira. 70 billion. 77, now, 77, uh, 77 trillion. 77 trillion, thank you very much. 77 trillion naira. That's the debt the federal government is living. The National Assembly that should serve as a tech is near, is almost a rubber stamp. I, I recall there was an issue where the president brought a request to, to seek for a loan and even the Speaker of the House of Rep and the Senate President did not even allow for a debate when members were calling for a debate. The real State House of Assembly are an extension of the office of the governors of the Tarsisi State um, governors that we have in Nigeria. So the various institutional checks that we have in place are not doing their due diligence. They are allowing people to, to do whatever they want to do without the cause for due process laws and procedure. You ask yourself, what do we have to show for all of this money that we have borrowed? And then some of them still have the gunshot to go about campaigning for, for their successor, and some of them still have the audacity to still campaign and rub it in under the platform of the party that has been in government for close to eight years, and then you have nothing to show for it. You know, if, if you have debt, incurred by government, and you have something meaningful to show for it. You are interested in paying for it. There's no doubt that governments across the world are the most debtors. However, you only borrow debt to do infrastructure, to build their site, to build their economy, not to fund their lifestyle. In Nigeria, we are, we are borrowing money to fund the lifestyle of, 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 of our elected officials and public officials. I have said this. Just take a queue and take a tree to the to the 
to the various and um, secretariat, state government secretariat, or local government secretariat, or federal government secretariat, or where you have locations of the ministries and departments and agencies of government across the seven and the six local government, across the 36 state government, federal capital territory, and the federal government. And you'll be shocked at the type of car they drive as official car. It's only in Nigeria that I see people are using luxury cars and not functional cars as as as, as official cars. And then we complain that we don't have money. We complain that there is inflation. We complain that oh, people need to pay more taxes. Yet government is not engaging in bad tightening. How do you justify the use of Prado as an official car? How? Or the various or the various types of cars that 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 they drive. Now we, we borrow money not to build infrastructure, we borrow money to fund the lifestyle of our public and elected officials. So we have nothing to show for it. Jide Johnson, I mean uh, you're actually uh, not far from it is a reality because if you look at the twenty twenty three budget as much as uh, that budget is not one that we, are, we have the capacity to fund, uh, we don't have what it takes to fund the budget, so it means we're going to borrow. But in th the content of the budget, if you look at it, some of the you know, content of that budget is not for the national interest, but for personal interest, especially with the House, uh, you know, the National Assembly increasing uh, allocation from 59 billion to 288 or thereabout a billion naira. But let's move away from that conversation. We'd we'll always have that, and we'll continue to talk about these issues until we get to a point where it sticks, and that would mean that we have taken the right action and taken the right decision. Now, two senior lawyers want EFCC scrapped. Agbakoba is part of them, and he's made several arguments. Uh, that's on the, uh, the uh, Punch newspaper this morning. Now, according to him, he said that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission should not have been in existence. He stressed that the commission uh, currently operates outside of the Constitution. However, the reference is that it does not have the power to interfere with the activities of state government. And so because it's a creation you know, of the federal government. They can't interfere. The argument is almost, uh, you know, it's lengthy. There are too many issues that he's raised. But I'd like to share your thoughts on that. What do you think? Should EFCC be scrapped? Well, um, I, I, I mean in between. I mean between in the sense that um, the EFCC's mandate, um, for me, has focused on prosecution other than prevention. Um, why do they wait for these crimes? Just like we have in these agencies, we have seen that um, most state government, most agencies of government at both state, federal, and local government level are not complying with financial regulations with respect to the awards of contracts and the rest of it. What are the systems that you have put in place to forestall that? We are all, what we see is USCG coming out to tell us that this person is to put 20 billion. 10 billion. The question you ask is, when did this start? How did it get there? What were these agencies? And um, what are they doing? Were they not tracking the accounts of this individual? Were they not tracking the accounts of this federal government? So beyond arrest and prosecution, what steps are they taking to forestall that? That for me is an area where I question the existence of EFCC because it's economic and financial crime. So in what way are they at the day to ensure that these people don't damage the economy before it becomes a financial crime. Now, someone is an accountant general of the federation is meant to ensure that the um, allocations and money voted for are distributed and sent to various various agencies of government. You have the auditor general of the federation. So these are these 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 are safety gaps that we put in place. How does TSCC work with this with these various services? And even at the state level to ensure that there is due diligence and compliance with financial regulation, other than coming out and arresting people at the end of their tenure, parading them and engaging in media trial. For me, ESC had engaged more in humanship than really doing the actual work. So if you look at it from that perspective, yes, I think there's a need for us to scrap ESC. Because at the end of the day, um, how many uh, 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 how many cases have been successfully prosecuted, particularly with, with respect to financial crime at the state, federal, and local government, and local government level, compared to 
cases that they are prosecuted for people engaging in in other nefarious activity, advanced risk fraud, and the rest and the rest of it. So, and then, if you also look at it, it was the federal government establishment that has not been domesticated across the state. So, if you, so if you look at it from that perspective, there can be an argument from some lawyers that they cannot. This is an agency of federal government. It can only operate in a fit, in a true federal system of government. Um, but it can only operate at that level. Okay, but um, what about some of the concerns that he has raised? Uh, the fact that uh, the EFCC is the creation of the National Assembly and uh, it doesn't have the power to interfere with the activities of the state government. Yeah, what I'm saying, I think you have that law. Uh, it means, you know, some states, I think, um, 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 Kano State, I think, um, or your state, or uh, some other states, you know, they have their own. EFCC and by by status of federal government, all of these things need to have domesticated this agency for it to be for it to, to, to operate. But you know when it was established, we have a supreme leader as head of state. So some things were revealed and it was at the committee stage of the president. If they are if they are talented then, probably they would have won as because this agency needs to have been domesticated. Each of the state has of assembly needs to have to have assented to to to, to that to that act that um, that that established EFCC at the federal level for it to operate at the state level. So I agree with people that with that argument. There's no doubt about that. But you know there are a lot of things that we do in this country that does not follow the due process and then we just allow it to fly over time. Uh the, the Guardian newspaper says uh, experts are asking the government to tame inflation, insecurity, and fuel subsidy. Uh, according to this expert, this probably might just chart the cost for 2023. Uh, do you really agree with this uh, expert? Yeah, we need to deal with the inflation. We need to deal with the insecurity. On the issue of fuel subsidy, we not know the position we are in. Because you look at the actors and players, that at the federal level to be first by the opposition, they said the government was not doing anything on subsidy, and they came on board. In actual sense, the major, the major factor that helped to populate their party and to popularize their movement was the was the was the first subsidy protest of 2012, and um, which battered the, the the problem for Jonathan administration. Then so. If, if you look at it, inflation, no doubt about that. You have double digit inflation. Insecurity, no doubt about that. It is practically impossible for people to travel freely across the length and breadth of this nation. On the subsidy, I don't know whether we are paying subsidy or we are not paying subsidy. The, the fact remains that we are not buying the fuel at the same price at different fuel stations. Some are selling it to 25, some are selling it to 50, some are still selling to 17. So we don't know if government is paying or not paying because we don't have a true picture. There's no transparency when it comes to the major foreign exchange honor for this nation, which is the oil and gas sector. The oil and gas sector is under the office of the president because the president himself is also the minister of petroleum, just having the minister of state. So for me, I don't know what the experts are saying with respect to the experts in that area they can see. But we need to deal with inflation. There's no doubt about that. And we need to deal with insecurity. And these are the kind of questions we need to ask people that are coming into the presidency. I have, I have followed the campaign trail. I have seen situations where presidential candidates will just go and spend 60 seconds, 60 to 90 seconds, ask them to give them music that they want to dance, and thank them and tell them, vote for me, I will, I will, I will solve your problem. Without articulating, without stating what will be the policy trust, and people will shout and then they will scream. And then that's it, that's the end of it. It across the party, across the party, with the exception of one party, across the party, what you see their candidates do is to go, gather people together, pay music for them, entertain them, make them to forget about their problems and lose their sense of reasoning for some time, rise on their emotions, and then at the end of the day, they pass, and then they begin to share the, 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 the video, the visuals of. Of, of, of their campaign, we're talking about the mama's crowd. Gina Johnson. You know how these things are done. You know, it's, it's, you know if, if, you have, if you have ever been involved in politics, you understand 
you, you mobilize on the local government level. You use state resources to do that. At the local government level, you have them is official. Each of the local government, let me see, let me take Kano, for example. You have for the four local government. Each of the local government, you ask them to come with 1,000 people. They mobilize these 1,000 people. They give them um, some, some, some amount of money. They rent buses. You have for the 4,000 uh, 4, already in the, in the stadium. So... Jide, just before we close this conversation down, uh, we're out of time. This will just be the last. Quickly, I'd like to uh, get your reaction on this ban by the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, uh, saying that it's limiting or it's banning the withdrawal from the federal government, state and local government account uh, from March, you know, the 1st, 2023. You have that body. You have that body. What has that body been doing before March? The question I ask is, and that's the question I'm asked from the inception of this administration. When people are going about saying that the big government is fighting corruption, and I said, okay, we are only fighting corruption on the pages of newspaper. I have not seen constructive steps. It takes a systemic effort for you to fight corruption. What are the steps that we have put in place? What are the measures? Now, um, that nothing has changed in terms of in terms of process and procedure, as regards how people um, disburse and access, access and disburse public funds, that you might be sure that at the end of this administration, corruption in this administration will be much more than what people are talking about under the United administration. And I'm sorry to have been proven right over time, because there are the, the safety guards that you have put in place to forestall an individual keeping his hand into the cookie jar. The question you ask is, what are they doing? What have they been doing to prevent people from dipping their heart into the national force, into the state force, or to the local government force? So you have these bodies that are existing on paper, that are paper tiger, that are not doing what they are supposed to do. And that's why we have found ourselves in this damn place. So why are they waiting till March, March, March 1st, 2022 to do what they have been assigned to do? Okay. Well, uh, let's see how all of that pans out. Others have said that this is just another uh, backing dog uh, without the capacity to implement it. And so uh, you have raised very valid questions, uh, G.D. Johnson, but we have to let it go at this point uh, because we need to uh, move on. Thank you so much for being part of the uh, show this morning. Off the press, we look forward to sharing more of your thoughts on more critical issues of national interest. Thank you, Mercy. Once again, Happy New Year to our viewers all over the world, and Happy New Year to you and Kofi. As then my woman's greeting to Kofi. Okay. And the rest of the crew. All right, then. Uh, G.D. Johnson has uh, joined us this morning, but we, we have to leave it at that. And Off the Press would return on Monday, and, uh, of course, the headlines would always be interesting because it's an election year. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll have some more conversations. Please stay with us.